What's happening folks, welcome back to the channel. It is the Derby preview for Sunday's game at Celtic Park against Rangers. It's the first Derby of the season and Chris, it almost feels like with everything that's went on this week in terms of the Champions League draw, all the transfer speculation, um, it almost seems like this first Derby has crept up on us, doesn't it? It does. It's probably the quietest build-up week on the east end of Glasgow um, that I've ever experienced just with the magnitude of the transfer windows and trying to seal those last minute deals for the key positions that we all know need to be strengthened and then obviously the champions league draw just being a fantastic spectacle um to, you know to sit through the live stream with the viewers and having 1600 viewers and just the draw itself in terms of the ties and um on paper it's the it's the draw of opportunity, like I said on the live stream. So yeah, this is just really really crept up on us. Um, but at the same time, it's an early opportunity to strengthen our position at the top of the table, Paul. If we win this game, we go five points clear. Nothing is won, but it does just continue to uh, represent our dominance in this fixture with four wins and a, and a draw last year. And let's be honest, that draws a game we should have won at Ibrox, uh, being up 2-0 and in complete control at halftime in the game. So lots to look forward to. Um, and no doubt we'll get the usual uh, rhetoric from the West End of Glasgow, um, both from their fans and their manager. But let's just do the talking on the pitch, as Brendan always does with the team. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Thinking back to the start of last season, um, going into this first derby, it was obviously Ibrox, and we were maybe missing some players through injury. Uh, we weren't fancy getting into that game because of the manner we'd started the season in. Contrast that to this time round, and we've started the season very well. We've won the first three league matches, we've scored nine goals, haven't conceded any. Um, we also won the other game, which was in the, in the cup against Hibs as well. So... What have you liked this season so far and what do you see as the main the main differences and improvements in the team for, for this time last season? Honestly, the biggest single thing has been the speed and the fluidity of our play. That, that to me, has been um, the biggest improvement uh, stemming from basically the last 10, eight, maybe eight games of last season where we really began to see... <clears throat> a Brendan Rodgers Celtic team, free of injury, really understanding the system that the manager wants them to play, both in terms of pressing and then the counter press. Um, and we've really seen that carry through. Uh, obviously, we've lost Matt O'Reilly in this transfer window, but we have been able to, so far, retain everybody else, which I think is really, really important. But just the speed the dynamic interchanging of the players in the last, you know, half to, you know, attacking third of the field and really the wingers. I feel like the wingers has been the biggest change I've seen, um, particularly with Nicholas Kuhn and then having, you know, Dyson Maida is such a fantastic player to have on your team because he could play through the middle like he did in the cup game. He's a threat out wide. He can nullify players on his own side with his pressing. Um, and then obviously James Forrest continuing to play at a very high level despite his age and years of service. But that to me has been the biggest difference. And this will sound really strange. I know Kyogo has not scored yet this year, but I think he's looked so much sharper and much better now that he and the team are fully adjusted to, to, to Brendan's system. And I would not be surprised if he scores his first goal of the season on, on, on Sunday. We know how much he loves this fixture. He has been a Rangers killer um, over the last few years. And um, assuming he trained all week, uh, which I've, I understand he has, he will start the game. Because I don't think Ida is fully match fit yet. But what a fantastic option to have to come off the bench at you know, 60, 70 minutes or if the game needs a change. Um, so, yeah, that, that to me is the biggest thing, Paul. The speed of the play, the interchange of the play. You've got a fully healthy Hattai McGregor, obviously up until last weekend, O'Reilly. I expect Bernardo will probably play, um, and he's done well in this fixture. So a lot to look forward to, but it's been a great start to the year. But as you said, Paul, it was the opposite. 
last year. We were not favoured going to Ibrox, just like Rangers are not favoured coming to Celtic Park. You can't take your opponent lightly, but in our manager, I trust, and that, that, that there's no chance of that happening. No chance. Yeah, that, that's an interesting point, obviously, because we come into this game, we're in brilliant form. Um, Rangers haven't been in, in very good form since the start of the season. There's lots going on off the pitch with them, whether it be in transfers or the stadium, and it all seems like it's not going too well for them at the minute. Whereas for us, we are so much better and so much we're playing at such a much higher level than we were at this time last season. We've started the season brilliantly, and so the narrative obviously is that we're going to get into this game and just sweep them aside, and we know that there is always the the question with derbies. I can never let myself think, well, we're just going to go and absolutely batter them 5-0, but um, I think that is key, the, the, the form coming into it. We often hear the cliche that form goes out the window in these games, that this fixture has basically stuck to form for, for a long time now. Um, and if you look back to that, those five games last season, um, we managed to navigate them very well. It was, it was one of the only things that we did very well last season throughout the whole campaign was how we managed these games. We were never behind in any of them. And when you look at, you've mentioned Dida there, who I think last weekend against St Mirren did look like he's he's lacking sharpness and he needs more time to get up to speed. Kyogo, I think, has looked sharp up until he maybe he knocked his shoulder against Hibs. Um, but if you look through this Celtic team, we have players who have done it in this fixture in recent years. The likes of Kyogo, even Bernardo last season, McGregor, Carter Vickers, even Alistair Johnson throwing in his debut had a, had a decent show in Ibrox, mm -hmm. stands up relatively well in this fixture. We've got players that you can look at and go, do you know what, he's been there and done it in this fixture and then he turns up for us. I think that's one thing that when the Rangers look through their team, they probably don't have as many of those. No, no, they don't. Um, and I mean, players with experience in this fixture, Paul, are always extremely important and, and nobody has more on our side than, than Callum McGregor, right? And I've been really impressed with how he started the year and whether it's just a psychological lift from knowing he doesn't have to play any more international football, I feel like he's had a bit more of a pep in his step um, so far to start this year. He's really controlled the games for us in that deep six position. And if Rangers allow him time on the ball, he's going to absolutely pick them apart. Um, and that that has been proven, to your point, around the form. And, and as, if, if form shows up and we have no complacency on our side, we are the better team. We have the better team. And if you marry those two things together, form and no complacency, we will win this game. It's it's just that simple. Um, so that's that's really the opportunity that's in front um, of the eleven players and and that will take the field on Sunday. And honestly, I'm just I, I can't wait because we're, we're already hearing the the murmurs from Clement and you know et cetera et cetera. Just when are you going to learn to just close your mouth? And let your team go out and actually do something. And then if they do something, you're welcome to then come out and say, yep, we've, we've made improvements. We're getting closer, et cetera, et cetera. If Celtic win all the four league games this year 2-1, you're nowhere any closer because you've lost all the games. You have to. You, these are the games you have to win for a, a variety of reasons. When it's early in the season, it's about laying down the psychological marker. If we win again on Sunday, then we just continue to to assert our dominance and assert the form that we have become accustomed to. And I'll tell you this, Paul, this version of Brendan Rodgers' team this year, and if we get all the additions in that we're hoping, is going to be an even better team and have a better points toll come the end of the season. And that I'm very confident of, just based on what I've seen so far. Um, and what I think is to come um, with the additions that we're hoping to finalise in the next day or so. Yeah, just, just touching on Clement there, I don't think he's handled himself very well in relation to this fixture at all. And I think if you go back to that 3-3 game at Ibrox, which is the only one we didn't win last season, and you rightly said after being 2-0 up and cruising at half time, we should have won it. Um, but Rangers come back, managed to draw the game 3-3 and Clement celebrated it with a lap of honour, going absolutely mental. And really, even though we should have won the game after being 2-0 up, that was the game that really swung the pendulum because Rangers could have went five points clear 
they had us on the home patch with no away supporters and they couldn't get the job done but Clement still managed to celebrate it um, like they'd won the Champions League. Anyway, um, back to the areas of the pitch that we can hurt Rangers on Sunday. You've talked about the wide areas, the, the improvement in Nicholas Kuhn. He didn't start against St Mirren last weekend. Uh, James Forrest got the nod. I thought that was interesting because if you go back to how we finished last season, it would have been Maeda on the left-hand side who'd performed so well in these games, um, both as a goal threat towards the end of last season, but also in terms of the way he presses James Tavernier, um, mm -hmm. who's a big player for Rangers. And on the right-hand side, it was James Forrest that, that really gave us an impetus in these games. He was really direct, really positive. And so I thought maybe Brendan Rodgers looking towards that game next week and thinking James, he might get the nod. But with Kuhn's form, who do you think he'll go with? I mean, to me, that's really one of only two decisions I think the manager has to make, right? Um, one probably feels obvious with with Bernardo replacing O'Reilly, at least to start the game. I think that that's, that's inevitable, Paul. Um, and I think Maida has to start on the left. So really, the other decision is, is it going to be Forrest or Kuhn? Now, Kuhn has a lower back problem. That's what kept him out of training the week leading up to last week's game at St. Menon, but he did obviously come off the bench and looked very bright again. My gut feeling is I think he'll go with Forrest. And obviously you'll have your you'll have your starting eleven out on Saturday and you'll make your call, um, Paul. But I think he'll go with James Forrest. Uh, and and I just simply think that might be because he's a little bit more match fit and has probably had two really good weeks of training where Kuhn's been in and out of training, at least until this week anyway. What I would say is I'd have no problem if Kuhn started the game based on what he's shown us so far this year. He he would deserve he would deserve his place. Um and I don't think anyone would feel differently. Um and James has had an he's had an okay old firm Derby career spanning Rangers pre-2012 and Rangers post-2012. But in recent derbies, he's been much better. So I am curious to see what, what Brendan does there because I think that's probably his most difficult decision. But my gut feeling is you'll go with you'll go with James A in this instance. I think that would I think that would split the support if you asked them, would you start Kuna Forest? And mm -hmm. the one thing with Kuna is unlike last season, if Kuna is to start the game, you'd be a lot more confident with his form and the way he's played now than you were last season. You think about Kuhn getting into one of these games, the way he was playing last season, um, you'd have been losing sleep over it, but he looks a totally different player. Um, got yeah. another assist again at the weekend against St Mirren. So you've got more trust in his ability to perform than, than you had last season. We don't know who will be at left back for Rangers. Could it be Jeffy? Could it be Yilmaz? Could it be uh, Dujon Sterling even, who mm -hmm. we've seen playing that position uh, in this fixture for Rangers? We don't know. Um, as always, the midfield will be really important and that that's why it's good that Paolo Bernardo was here last season and had that influence in the fixtures the goal at Celtic Park the driving run for the winner in the cup final so even though we're losing Matt O'Reilly who's a big performer for us in these games we've got Bernardo who has proven that he can do it as well which is key for us and Chris the other factor is this was supposed to be the game that welcomed back away fans uh, to the grounds uh, but we find ourselves again only having home supporters um, I've seen the pictures during the week of Celtic doing the test run of having the nets up to, to split the 2500 allocation, but uh, it's not to be, uh, and it might looks like it's going to be 2025 until we see uh, any away fans back at the, these games. Yep, and the manager said it best. The, the only reason we're back here is because of Rangers. It's nothing to do with Celtic, and I love the fact that he called that out in a recent press conference, Paul. Because, and I know there are some sections of the support that don't like having the Rangers fans in the stadium, but we love going to Ibrox, right? I mean, that's especially in the last 20 years and in the last 10 specifically, we've just had unparalleled historic success going there. And um, it would be great for our fans to be able to enjoy that. But unless it can be done in a safe manner, then 
we're 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 still in the same position until we get to 2025. We'll have obviously the New Year game, and then the last league game uh, before the split will be at Ibrox. And all things being well, there will be the 2,500 supporters in there. It's really disappointing. I was personally looking forward to it because when you see the atmosphere at the at the cup final and the 50-50 split, it, it does make for a fantastic spectacle, and that's what makes it the greatest derby in the world. So it is really disappointing. The Rangers can't get their act together, but that's been their mantra of late. They just they're a shambles, um, particularly off the park. And they'll have they'll have false confidence going into this game. You know, six 0 win against uh, a very poor Ross County team, and they'll think they're world beers. But let's just see. Let's just see what happens by Sunday at two uh, thirty. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The other thing that Celtic have in their favour is the the record of Brendan Rodgers in this fixture. Um, only one defeat across uh, seventeen or eighteen meetings, I think it is. So his record is nearly impeccable uh, in this fixture. And I think again, you see last season, despite the fact that times we were really poor, um, he always finds a way to set the team up. Uh, properly for this game he really does and I think if there's um, you know people had unfair questions against his record before he came back the second time because you know Rangers were just back in the Premier League and they were this and that last year we played them five times and they didn't beat us once that says it all right Mm -hmm. The his his ability to galvanize the players and to get the best out of them in what is the most important fixture domestically for us as Celtic fans. He has proven it over and over and over again. I mean, to only have lost one of 18 derbies. That's an unbelievable record. Um, Better than any other Celtic manager in history, albeit that's a bit of a smaller sample size, but the eye test tells you that he knows exactly what he's doing in terms of the preparation, the week leading up to the game, those final team talks and understanding where we need to be in certain parts of the game and how we need to control the game, both through the press and the counter press and just getting the best out of your quality players in those games generally has added up to a very successful run of fixtures for us. And like I said, if we bring the form that we've shown and our players show up and that we're not complacent, we're going to win this game. Yeah, we've talked a lot about the factors that are in Celtic's favour coming into this game, but the one that stands out above all for me is the way that we've started games this season. And Mm -hmm. we know that in this fixture, the way you start the game is massive. The first goal is so pivotal time and time again in these fixtures and I think if you you think about us having a full house at Celtic Park and um, being in brilliant form if we can get a fast start like we have done so often already this season on Sunday um, and get an early goal there's a real opportunity we can take the game away for Rangers early goals. Well that's exactly it and that's further that's further underscored, Paul, by the fact that they won't have any fans to try and bring them back into the game if they do concede an early goal. And again, they've only got themselves to blame for that scenario. We were fully prepared. We were ready. We've invested the money, the time, the nets to provide the security that they're looking for for, for their fans. I, I would definitely agree with you. If we score in the first 10 or 15 minutes, we, which we have done, and I think in almost all of our games this year, that is going to be big, big trouble for Rangers, and it will be a true test of their character and their mentality. And I question whether they have either in those circumstances under the cauldron of 60,000 Celtic fans. And the way we've been playing, if we score early, I think our confidence just grows naturally. Um, And it could be a long afternoon for Rangers if that's the case. We all know, I think, what Rangers will be looking to do. It's to keep the game close for 60, 70 minutes, take the crowd out of the game, and hope they can nick a goal some way, shape, or form. Um, so that that's probably going to be their approach. I think if they try to come out and play, and they leave pockets of space in the midfield, McGregor and Hatai are going to really hurt them. Really, really hurt them. Hatai's been uh, superb this this first four games of the year. Um, he really does look back to his sparkling best, and 
Um, he's a real, real problem in that kind of hole behind the front three. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing how the game plays out as always and, and, and excited for hopefully another, another win and a great start to the season um, further underscored. Aye, let's hope so. There was speculation during the week, people suggesting that Rangers were going to come and, and really have a go, I think, off the back of Clement's comment that um, they were going to go full for the three points. I don't think that that really signifies the way that they're going to tactically approach the game, but we'll wait and see. Um, and like you say, maybe if they do come and try and attack and, and play openly, that could play in our hands um, at Celtic Park. The last thing uh, to do, Chris, as always, is ask you for your prediction. And I think you were you were relatively consistent and close last season. So what do you think this time around? Uh, I am predicting a, a 2 nothing Celtic win. There you go. Right out of the shoot. There you go. Uh, I would take 2-0. Um, yeah. Maybe you in the comments wouldn't take 2-0. You can let us know what you think the score will be on Sunday. And as Chris said earlier, I'll be back with the starting 11 prediction tomorrow. But until then, like this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.